Con Lang's back with another episode. Let's get into it. Right, homework last time. Research and decide tenses, aspects, and decide how verbs will conjugate. That was a fairly easy one, I think. If you kind of knew what you were doing, I guess. Um, but yeah, this episode we're going to cover adjectives firstly. Uh, there are different types of adjectives. There are prepositive or attributive adjectives. I prefer the second one, but the first one also works. Uh, adjectives that appear before the noun, such as the happy dog in English. Postpositive adjectives, and you can see here they all they're pre they're pretty much the same name. Uh, pre being before it, of course, and post being after. If you realise that, props to that. Um, these there's two types of these, which one that appears immediately after the noun, such as something special. And linked in another linked via a copula. A copula is a word or phrase linking a subject to its complement, e.g., the dog is happy. The uh, postpositive adjective isn't super common in English. We normally just use attributive, but they are obviously possible, as you can see here. And nominalized adjectives, adjectives that have been used as a noun, such as the English. This can also go the other way, as we will talk about later. So, do we put adjectives first or last? Well, this depends on the language, but most often languages don't stick to one or the other. They don't often do first or last, like completely, as you saw with English. Uh, there are ways to decide naturalistically if your language is a natlang. Um, it depends on the word order you've chosen for different parts. And there are great videos on that, I will link one in the description. And otherwise you can basically just choose it based on goals and preferences, which one you prefer, and what suits your language. But what about brighter, brightest, and brightly? Aren't those different types of adjectives? Well, yeah, but let me move on to that. So comparative adjectives are the first one there. Compares the differences between two objects. Uh, my dog is cuter than his. These are often expressed using suffixes or words such as more. Uh, this is English, of course. Uh, there are other languages do other things. Superlative expresses an object has more of a particular quality, such as my dog is the cutest, and is expressed using suffixes or words such as the most. Adverbs describe the manner, place, time, frequency, degree, or level of certainty, and other things of a subject or an action, such as, he pet my dog here, he pet my dog yesterday, he pets my dog daily, he pet my dog softly, and he definitely pet my dog. These are examples of each of the things on the left, in order. Next, adjectival word order. So this bases, so this tells us the order in which adjectives go in based on what they describe. Such as in German, time, manner, place is the order, so adjectives appear in that order. Such as this sentence here, er spielte jeden Tag mit meinem Hund im Park. This translates to, he plays every day with my dog in the park. He, like here, you see time, manner, place. In English, it's a slight bit more complicated. So what am I going to do with my adjectives? Well, I'm going to do this, it's pretty easy. I'm just going to use comparative superlative and adverbs. And I'm going to add a prefix to them. I'm going to do this to describe different nouns. Just going to put the noun and then add an adjective between two, I guess, particles. And I'm not going to have any adjective of word order. Because why not? It's a bit complicated to remember. To convert words between other types, such as, as I said earlier, between adjectives and nouns, it often uses postpositions, such as this adjective to noun, often you add y such as soupy, hairy, etc. You get the idea. Let's move on to word building. This is the fun part because you get to make your own words. Uh, it's quite good. You get to actually make your language completely functional. So to make a lexicon or a vocabulary, there's no specific way that everyone uses. It depends on your language and what you like to do. But some examples are evolving existing words, making words based on the root. These top two are very common in making natural languages, combining words, combining random letters and others. I'm going to choose this one 
considering I'm making a cross between English and German. So I'm going to take the word for bird, and I'm going to take the word for bird in German, Vögel, and I'm going to throw them in this blender here, this beautiful clip art blender, blend them up, and I've made Bergel. Why not? I'm going to add them to my dictionary. As you can see here, it is a spreadsheet which I can easily use to filter out words and find them if I need them. Here's a great video from Artifexium, which I will link in the description, that involves evolving from roots. It's actually really good, really useful, especially when making things from natlangs. So, homework time. Describe how adjectives will work, decide how to form words, and make a lexicon. Pretty simple, and pretty fun. That basically wraps up making a very simple but functional conlang. And actually what I've made throughout this series is my first conlang. Well, this isn't my first, as I have accidentally confused someone with, but the first conlang I ever made was this one uh, that I've made in these videos. Um, I just kind of remade it. One, because I was lazy, but two, because it basically sums up a simple way of making a language. It functioned quite well, surprisingly. And yeah, you can now follow this as many times as you want until you find new things to add to your language. There are many more things you can do. Um, but next video will hopefully be tips, tricks, and tools that you can use to create your conlang or conlangs in the future, such as things to create words, make languages and sounds, and create tables and whatever you may need. But yeah, that'll be it.